Hi, my name is Tierra Pitchford. I am a first grade teacher in Texas. And I am Denise Dawkins, a pre-K teacher from Washington, D.C. Today, we're excited to bring to you this month's Voices feature title, Whoosh, Lonnie Johnson's Super Soaking Stream of Inventions. And we're here in Austin, Texas to speak with the author and illustrator about their book, their collaboration, and what inspired them to write about Lonnie's story. You ready to go meet them? Let's go. Hey. So Chris, you mentioned that the inspiration for the book Woosh, Lonnie Johnson's story, was inspired by a group of librarians and the conversation you had with them. Can you tell us more about that? You bet. Um, I was visiting schools up in Coppell, Texas, and one day these two librarians were telling me about some professional development they'd gone to, where everyone in the classroom was asked to draw a scientist. And what most commonly resulted was a cartoon that kind of looked like Albert Einstein, you know, wild hair, um, white lab coat, white guy. And that was the point of the whole exercise, was to make these educators more aware of the existence of and the need for much greater diversity among scientists. It's not just white people, it's not just men. And you know that stuck with me. I began researching African-American scientists, African-American inventors. And as soon as I came across the, the rocket scientist, the, the NASA engineer who had invented one of the greatest toys of all time, like I was very interested. So I've got a question for y'all. How do you use whoosh in your classrooms to encourage your students to pursue their ideas despite whatever challenges they may run into? As a first grade teacher, I discuss with them challenges that they may have experienced in school or even outside of school. And we talk about the perseverance that you have to have to overcome those challenges. We talk about Lonnie Johnson, how he created this great invention and he was going to take his super soaker to different companies and he was getting no and no and he had to be patient and he said he continued to be patient and I tell them sometimes in life that's what we have to do to overcome our challenges. With my pre-k kids we've been studying recycling and we've been collecting lots of recyclables mm -hmm. and so one of the things we talk about is how to remake recyclables into something else mm -hmm. and so I use the book to inspire them to make the recycling stuff into an invention of their own and we worked with our fourth grade buddy class and they came up with ideas on robots they mm -hmm. really got they stuck on that robot theme and they made robots to do their homework Work. This was the fourth graders. <laughs> robots to do their homework, robots to make their lunch, robots to clean up their rooms. They really enjoyed that. And then we're going to do the next step of actually using all our recycled materials to make their inventions. It's going to be really cute. Fantastic. And, and the, 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 the prototypes, I, th I think, if I recall correctly, one of the first prototypes that Lonnie made of the Super Soaker used a soda bottle. And so he kind of you know, yeah. set, set the precedent yeah. for, for using those. Yeah. Did you guys tinker around when you were kids too? When I was a kid, I just liked to keep my fingers busy and I would always make toys from things that I found around the house. So an empty toilet paper roll became a choo-choo train, an old sock became a sock puppet. Uh -huh. I was always tinkering, making things, and just keeping my fingers busy. As an artist, I mean, tinkering is all about experimenting. Mm -hmm. So when I'm illustrating a book, I might use my camera to take a photograph and then use the, the textures from the photograph to actually paint my pictures with, so I'm constantly um, experimenting and tinkering with, with my illustrations as well. I, mean, I, I think my tinkering when I was a kid was, was primarily of the, of the writing variety. I love writing stories by myself or, cre or creating with other people. It's not the same as building stuff physically, but there's the same idea behind it of, of, of you know, trial and error. You see what mm -hmm. works when you're trying a story. You know, that's why we, we revise, and that's why Lonnie mm -hmm. Johnson and other engineers have multiple prototypes. Um, so that was, that was my kind of tinkering. And I think that's important for our students now providing those STEM buckets so that they can get that time outside of academics to actually be creative and do different things with their hands because not all of us learn the same. Yeah, exactly. Like kids learn differently. So you need to have a variety of materials in your classroom so that it'll spark that joy in them and that joy for learning that gets their minds going and, and tinkering with different materials. 
So as the author and illustrator of Woosh, how do you think it sets examples for young readers now? Well, I think there's the, the goal setting as, as one example of, 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 of how it sets an example. I mean, Lonnie was determined to be an engineer for him when he, was, when he was very young. And I think setting goals, even if you later come up with different goals, I think setting goals moves you forward down the path that you, that you need to be on. And also, I think that before a kid can become a certain thing, they have to see that. And I think that, you know, when I think back to when I was a kid, I was a tinkerer. But I never dreamed of becoming an, an engineer, because to me, an engineer was somebody who, drew, who drove choo-choo trains. Um, I had no idea that my making toys out of toilet paper rolls or fixing our doorbell and getting myself stung by electricity, that that could actually grow up to a career as an engineer. But with a book like Whoosh, a child can see an African-American child who liked to tinker and grew up to become an inventor. And I think there's also something to be said for the, the, the different paths that Lonnie's life took beyond what he expected. Our lives take different paths, and so it's, I think it's really important to not, um, not, be, not assume that, that the path you're on is necessarily the only path you're ever going to be on or that you can't come back to that path later. Because what I was thinking about was just how, you know, life brings us along these paths and these turns and twists, and you just never know where it's going to go for... For Lonnie, it, you know, the super soaker led to getting the funding so that he could have a bigger workshop and do more things that he really as aspired to do. Yeah. And I think the thing that surprises kids the most when I read Woosh to them in my, my school visits is when I get to the page where everything falls apart. I mean, Lonnie has quit his day job, he's primed to, to succeed, and one by one, everything falls apart. They're not expecting that. They think he's on this trajectory now where everything is going great. He's got this idea for a toy. It, obviously, it's going to be the super soaker. What could possibly go wrong? And, and lots of things did. And yet, he still remain the, the same you know, the same person who was incapable of, of being discouraged mm -hmm. as, that he was when he was a kid, when he was solving problems with a robot, when he was at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, when, when he you know, heard the word no again and again in all those, all those you know, toy companies boardrooms. Yeah, yeah. You know, one of the things we tell our kids in our school, one of our little mantras is mistakes are where the new learning goes. Mm -hmm. So all of his mistakes, like it really fed into that, like the kids like really picked up on that. His mistakes, his nose, those, those wrong turns actually were just like, just a little detour, something that he needed to learn so that he could get to that ultimate goal. It's like having a growth mindset. We tell yeah, them, exactly. We tell our kids, have that growth mindset, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you know, you may not get it yet. Mm -hmm. I think the one thing that I want my students really to walk away with is just knowing that they are creators. Mm -hmm. They can see Lonnie creating and that they can create as well. That's why I give them all those materials so that they can create their own masterpieces. I always tell my kids that they can be whatever they would like if they put their mind to it. It was so great hearing about their collaboration and getting a behind the scenes peek at their creative process. Yes, and it was truly inspiring hearing directly from the author and illustrator. We hope that you enjoy sharing this book with the children in your life just as much as we did.